Go where your best prayers take you and cleanse the fists of your spirit and take it easy. Breathe deeply of the glad air and live one day at a time. Know that you are precious and learn to trust. Amen. Well, good morning to all of you. I hope you are well and enjoying the summertime. As summer creeps along, I've talked to several of our teachers were saying this morning they're seeing that back to school sign around them. They're trying to ignore it. So I'm, I'm inviting you with them. Ignore it, ignore it, ignore it. And if summertime's not a big rhythm for you, still enjoy this weather and enjoy what summer has always been for us. I think emotionally, psychologically, a time to rel- relax and rest and reconnect with people and spend some time that doing some things that you might not otherwise do. And I love summer for that fact because I think that in our world today where everything is glumped together, um, not much separation between seasons and times and um, that kind of business, that we need these separations. We need summertime. We need a time when we think of it as going a little slower. Yes, I'm going to say it, doing a little less. Not being quite so driven, being quite so busy. And boy, our culture needs it badly. And I know that you are not in charge of all of that, so I invite you into that place. But it is summer, and summer often is vacation, and Lois and I have been really blessed to have some good vacation time this this year, to be away some, to catch up with ourselves, to see some places we've not seen, meet some people we've not met. But part of our vacation is always also to go to the family farm, which we have just returned from. And we laugh and say it's a little like Green Acres, Some of you get that. It is kind of a little bit like Green Acres, but it's a great place over in southern rural Arkansas on the border of Louisiana. And I don't know if you would like this or not, but it's lots of work. And some of you, for you, vacation, that just wouldn't sit. But, I mean, we're clearing brush and cutting, you know, cutting lots of grass and repairing stuff. And the truck had flat tires, and then we have to, the pond is silted in or our spring. See, I love all that. Just staying busy all day long. And you're sweating, it's nasty, and you're dirty. And, yeah, I look at your faces. Y'all going, I don't get that. That's not vacation for me. I get you. But I don't know about you. See, that's vacation for me. Because what it does is it brings some kind of deep, kind of settling thing in my soul I just slow down and what I'm attending to is what I have that's all that exists right there my mind slows down you know that little hamster wheel all of you got one of those things spinning it spins a lot slower the things that are close and pressing on me seem further away emotionally the world in some way over in that rural place seems far away I was very thankful for that because I was feeling that deep sense of peace. A spiritual word, not a political word, not even a social word. It is a spiritual word. That deep resonance of peace inside of me. And I tell you, 600 and I think it's 72 miles from Knoxville to the door of the farm is not far enough to get away from the news, is it? Because it was right there on the edge. The discord and violence that we have witnessed, and it seems all summer long and all spring long, another young disgruntled man or woman in the world shooting others over something or another, showing those people that they were wrong at the end of a gun, the kind of constant barrage of politicians and religious people yammering at each other. Sorry, I'm away, I can say that. Just at it constantly. And then a blast from the past that people of my generation, I'm the old guy now, thought we would be behind us forever. An opposing march of the new Black Panthers at the same time in the same place with the old KKK. I just thought, what in the world? I don't know about you, but I really was wondering, where is our peace? Where is it? Where is it in the world? Where is it for us? 
So I hope if you don't hear anything else in this little bit of a homily this morning, think about that for you today. Take away this thought for the day. Where is your peace? How do you find it? Where do you find it? What can extinguish it? What takes it away from you? Is it playing music or having the leisure just to sit and listen to music? Is it working a crossword puzzle or a Sudoku puzzle? Is it working in the garden like Judy and Peter did with these gorgeous flowers from their garden? Thank you very much. Taking a walk outdoors, is it like Tom Rasnick talked about last week? He starts the day in a peaceful way, walking his dog. What is it that actually brings you peace? And do you know it when you experience that peace? Because it's important. And where does it go? I, said, I told this story the other day, and Jason and a couple of folks were standing there. They said, you need to tell that in big church. So I said, okay, I'll repeat that story because it's one of my favorites, one I've had for 30 years. And the story goes like this. There's the old master, and he has his student come to him. Some of you may know this story. And the student says, I am just on fire. I am so unhappy. The world is so terrible. My life is I'm just tired of the world. It's just on top of me. And the master says, okay. He says, um, well, come with me. And he takes him in the house into the kitchen. He gets a glass of water, fills it up, and takes salt. Salt's the water, and he swirls it around. He says, drink from this. And he drinks it, and the young man spits it out in the sink, and he said, what was that like? He said, it's terrible. It's awful. It's salty. It's disgusting. He said, it's just the way I feel. Master shakes his head. He says, now come with me. As the man, young man leave the house, they go down to the lakeside. He says, takes the salt, shakes it in the water, swirls the water around, dips his cup. He says, taste that. He says, it tastes fresh. He said, yes, it does. And I would su suggest to you that you stop being a glass and become a lake. You see, life is about perspective. Do we really think that the world is coming to an end? Do you really? Have you read any history? From our eminent professor sitting here, Paul, is there a little history that shows us that the world a lot of times has looked like it's coming to an end? Are we the only people who have experienced such trying, terrible things? Well, of course not. And it does not mean that these things that we're experiencing, we should just walk past. That's not my point. My point is, though, about perspective. Where is our perspective? And rather point at me, I want you to point at yourself. Do a little mirror check. Where is your perspective, and how do you get it? Like this young man in the story, how do you become a lake with all the hard things in the world instead of a container that's a glass? See, perspective matters. Life is about perspective. And I'll tell you, a lot of these people perpetrating violence, suggesting inane suggestions and fixes for problems that make problems worse, they need perspective. We don't need any more opinions. We've got plenty. You need another opinion? I don't. I need more perspective. And I'm praying for it every day. When I'm in a jam and I'm in that tight place and I can be just as just virulent and ugly as any human on the planet, I say to myself, you need some perspective. You need to step back. And I don't know about you, but I have two things that I do on a regular basis that cause my perspective to go right out the window. The first is to think that it's all up to me. I'm alone in this deal. It's up to me. I'm, I'm it. I'm the it. It must be on my shoulders. I'm carrying it around. You know, the ball's in my court. Um, and I don't think I'm the only one that thinks that. I think a lot of y'all think that too. In fact, I think most of our culture thinks that. No, actually God is on the job. Isn't he? Is that not what we say week after week when we come here? God is on the job. Or why do we come here? 
You're wasting your time if you don't believe that. I mean, really, we're saying things that you don't believe. I would go, go somewhere where they're saying something you do believe. God is either on the job or God is not on the job. According to Judeo-Christian heritage, that's an exclusive. You don't get a choice. You don't get to opt out. You have to answer for yourself. The traditional answer for thousands of years is God is on the job. But I know that there's a, a subtle shift in theology. It's been going on for a very long time. It's represented today by a fellow named Don Cuppet, who's an Anglican priest. He calls himself a radical theologian. He says that God does not exist anywhere outside of our ideas about God. God is only a projection of you and me. That's really. God is merely a metaphor. He says this, God is your guiding star, the dream you live by. And I want to say in that sweet. That's what God has become in the world that we face, the world that people for every eon has faced. No, that's not what we say. God is not a projection simply of myself or yourself. That is not all that God is. God is God. Outside of us and wonderfully at the same time, part of us, so intimately, sometimes we can't even separate the two. How wonderful is that? But we are not God. See, he's more than the good or the longings we have for a good world. God is more than our work for a just and equitable society. That's not God. God is much more, and he's much more than the rules and regulations and the morality we seem to drop so blithely on one another on a regular basis. God is more than that. You and I know that. Deep inside, we know that. But when I'm in that place, I promise you, my perspective, because I forget that God is on the job. God is at work right now. And our Christian job, I think, modestly, my Christian job, not my priestly job, my priestly job is to do the functions I do. My Christian job is to know that God is at work and to align myself with God at work. That's what my job is. And that is the failing that we see around us in so much of religion today. That is not the perspective. But that is our perspective as Christians. And you know, my second problem is just like my first. It's really close. I'm in control. <laughs> and I tell you all that I'm kind of recovering from my control stuff. I got a lot of it. I want to control everything. But I'm working on it. And I know many of you are too. You see, I, I always borrow the words from my friends in recovery. Let go and let God. Or what we teach our children at the Episcopal School. Here's Ross Young. We started the Episcopal School, and we started this thing called the Tribes Agreement, and the number one agreement, you know what we teach the littlest ones, the little Sprouse kids back there, you know what we teach them? Let go and move on. And then they see every adult around them not doing it. Isn't that fascinating? Let go, move on. Well, if it works for a kindergartner or pre-kindergartner, it probably works for adults. Lots of us need to let go and move on. Do you see, it's not always about you or me. It is not up to you or me. But see, I don't like that. You know why? It makes me feel out of control, which I was not in control of anyway. Those are my struggles. I invite you into yours. But I know this. Did you hear the words of Ephesians? But now in Jesus Christ, you who were once far off have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For he is our peace. He came and proclaimed peace to you who were far off and peace to those who were near. It's done. You don't create it. You don't earn it. You can't be good enough and you can't be bad enough to push it away. Peace is all around us then somehow we have to find it, discover it, access it, drink it in. And man, does our culture need it badly.
and do I need it badly on a regular basis? The peace that passes all understanding is absolutely there for us. It is available every minute of every day. So tap into a bit of it today. What gives you peace? Go and do that activity for a little bit of time. Figure it out. Let it come to you. Taste it. Drink it into your soul. And it will make a difference. And always the promise is when it is different for you, it is different for all those people around you in the most wonderful of ways that fits perfectly, my guess is, into the design that God had in mind to begin with. Vacation short. Live it up. Amen.